But this time the patient, not yet Ewan, this time the patient um, is going to be treated with a new experimental drug. So that's you and my six-year-old son. Um, we just got a whole load of Brio out. We got an electric train set. OK, so here is a conjugate molecule. So there is the drug carrier now at the back. And the drug is, in fact, Baba the elephant in his chariot at the front. So this is uh, an example of a drug delivery vehicle. OK, Ewan, you only can switch on the drug delivery device. Uh, and we had just great fun. We spent a Sunday afternoon just doing this together, um, just filming a whole load of stuff. OK, off it goes. Now this time the patient is going to swallow a conjugate medicine. Yeah, it was all very unscripted. Um, yeah, cinema verite, I guess. And it's got to go to the right place. And we want this to go to the liver this time. So it's now entering the circulation and it's going to be turned round. Oh, it's gone the wrong way. Um, but it might be going around the circulation. It's, it is indeed going around the circulation. But once again, it's gone to waste. So the drug has been wasted. Yeah, it looks like I'm about to go to court or uh, wedding. Um, actually, I'm preparing for my inaugural lecture, and the lecture theatre you can see here is uh, that's where the show is going to be. There's probably going to be about 50, 60 people, and what I'm doing is uh, running through, trying to make sure I've got the right patter and you know, planning the performance. Well, inaugural lecture is a, it's a tradition uh, that a number of universities have that when you're promoted to professor, you give a public lecture, and the idea is that you're meant to show what you do, why you do it, and why it matters. And it's got to appeal to people right across the department, but also you know, your friends and family as well. I'm not sure whether that was totally correct in that. <laughs> right, well, the, um, my family will be here, my kids will be here, my parents are going to be here. It's also a train journey as well. Uh, but also uh, people from, from the School of Pharmacy, so the head of school, there'll be some pretty serious scientists here, of course. So that's an interesting thing you have to pitch so that a six-year-old can understand it and somebody who's been working in the field 30 years can, isn't bored by it. I'll go through a little bit about what polymer chains are. Quite nervous, actually. It's one of the more difficult things to do. I spend the whole bank holiday preparing for this. Uh, I mean, everyone knows that inaugural is, you know, it's a public event. It's meant to be quite a big show. Uh, and uh, so, yes, I'm quite nervous. It's not an easy audience in the way that sometimes conferences, even with hundreds, sometimes thousands of people, uh, you know who your audience is much better in those situations, whereas this, it could be a bit of a mix and match. Facing between the different groupings, which gives the different uh, crystal polymorph. Now, calcite naturally forms at room... You want to do a good show. You want people to be entertained. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm sure if you asked a comedian and maybe people <laughs> will look at this thing and say, who is this clown? Um, but, you know, you, people are nervous before you do a performance, and, and so you should be, otherwise you're not, you know, you won't give something that's good. If you print the calcite, you get calcite. If you print the calcite... What I'm talking about is I'm, I'm looking at uh, the links between uh, polymers, uh, polymer chains, uh, and chains, trains, and also how these systems might actually form artificial brains. So there's a bit of... Poor rhyming in there. And I roped in my son, Ewan, who's six, to do a video. So this is a thing we built from a Brio train set, so I'll just get that going. This time the patient is going to be treated with some advanced therapy, so it's gene therapy time for the patient. And what we've done here is, in our special uh, drug carrying system, as you can see there, the can of worms actually is condensed DNA inside a polymer complex. And again, we've attached it to a delivery vehicle and what we're going to do is we're going to give the patient gene therapy, which is significant because it looks like his left eye has shifted quite considerably. OK, assistant, switch on the drug-carrying vehicle. Away it goes, in go the genes. This time they seem to have been injected into the head. Well, we pretend he's swallowing. Oops! The, <laughs> the, the genes of DNA has fallen out. <laughs> and once again, that's research for you. That's what happens when you do research. Not everything works first time. <laughs> Sister Ewan for that, so, yeah. uh, as you can see, he's set out for a career in research because you just have to keep trying. Right. Okay, so, so the idea there is really just to show that you know, if you're delivering drugs to a patient, it's not a trivial thing to do, um, and that the drugs have lots of different routes, uh, and there are lots of places where actually it can go wrong when you're doing the research stage. And of course, the research stage is fine, in the patients it's clearly not. Going in by the heart and now the drug is entering the stomach. <laughs> it's got to try and make its way out of the stomach and it's struggling and that's always the problem. Well I think the idea is you've got to bring in a little bit of humour and you've got to show that uh, obviously you've got a say a mixed audience so yes it's got to appeal to the to the top profs at the in the department um, but it's, you've got to lighten it up a little bit as well because I think 
um, a lot of the science, you've got to try and make, you, you know, it's one of your jobs as a scientist to try and make things relevant to a sort of general population and uh, non-specialists certainly. So that's what I want to try and do with these kind of things is just to just have a little bit of humour. Yes, what we do is very serious, but there are ways, analogies and ways of telling a story that it's important to get that message across. Is Ewan coming today? He, he'll be there, yeah. What will he think of that? I don't know. He might jump up and down. He may walk out. He may just get bored. Um, and his younger brother, Hamish, who's three, is going to be here and we're just going to stuff him full of chocolates to keep him quiet. Summer, this is the inscription, uh, which you can see. <laughs> Then there's wine um, and uh, you know, some nibbles and all that kind of thing and um, meet and greet for, for 20 minutes, half an hour. Then I'll probably go home uh, and I think everyone else goes back to their offices. Good luck. Thank you.